Hi, my name is Amrita and this is Amrita by the Book, my booktube channel. And today I thought that I'd do the A to Z book challenge. Now for those who don't know, the A to Z book challenge is a reading challenge that basically works as a list of prompts based on the alphabet. So you can diversify your reading, you can hold yourself accountable, and you can also just try and see how many books you go through in a year. And if you finish it, then well, you've done 24 books in a year. A pretty good goal. Now I personally don't do reading challenges because I'm too much of a mood reader and also I don't need help of that kind. I'm not trying to be smug about it, I'm just saying like, you know, why am I making this video? I wanted to talk about books and this is my channel so I can do what I want. The only rule that I had for this video was that it had to be a book that I own. So most of these books are books that I've read already or are books that I plan to finish before the end of the year. And a couple of them are recent editions, some of them have been on my Kindle or in my library for years. And I have to say, some of these prompts were hard, like I didn't know just how few books I owned with certain letters of the alphabet. Okay, so first up is A, which is for Ayoade on top. Now for those of you who don't watch a lot of British television, Richard Ayoade is a I want to say British, Norwegian. I think his mom is like from one of the Scandinavian countries, but he is one of the most hilarious deadpan humorists that I have ever seen in my life. And he is a total delight. Um, he has two shows that I watch regularly. One is Travel Man, where he goes on these weekend trips with celebrities some of them are his friends some of them he doesn't know at all and it's always super awkward and delightful and Ayoade on top is him basically parodying film scholarship so he took this one particular terrible Gwyneth Paltrow rom-com and then did this deep dive reading of that movie and he is absolutely serious in tone throughout the book and it's basically one joke that's been stretched out to the maximum and some would say past its breaking point and th that's fair. Now I personally read a lot of film criticism so for me this is very funny um, and also I really like his humor. Your mileage may vary. B is for Battle for Bittura by Anuja Chauhan. Now this is a book that came out quite a few years ago and um, Anuja Chauhan is this Indian chiclet author, I would say. Um, and she is very popular in India, maybe outside as well, I don't know. But Battle for Bittura is the story of these two heirs of two political dynasties who are engaged in a fierce battle for a political constituency in India. Chauhan herself comes from a political family in India, so she has a lot of behind the scenes anecdotes and um, characterizations that appear very true to life. And it's very funny and it's very rooted in a specific type of India. And this book was a huge success and all my friends were talking about it. So I bought it and I read it and I thought it was fine. If you're looking for a quick, easy weekend read that is funny and has a sort of delightful ship, then this is the book for you. C is for Cut to the Quick, which is the first book in the Julian Kestrel series by Kate Ross. Now this is a historical murder mystery series and it's about this guy called Julian Kestrel who finds himself embroiled in these various murder cases and becomes a sort of gentleman detective. And I really like it. I like who Julian is and I like the way he approaches cases and it's a little bit different from the usual know-it-all asshole vibe of a lot of these people. It's sort of rare for me to really, really like the lead gentleman detective in one of these series and Julian is one of those rare exceptions. Um, it's written by Kate Ross who sadly passed away incredibly young 
and so we only have four books in the series they're all complete she didn't leave anything unfinished behind um, as far as I know but together the four of them are really fun and there is a main arc that she never got to complete because um, you know she got sick but even though that main arc is left at a sort of heart-wrenching position, it does provide an ending of a kind. So you can safely read the series without wondering if there are going to be loose threads. D is for The Diary of a Social Butterfly by Moni Mosin. And again, this was one of those books that was so popular in its home country of Pakistan that all my Pakistani friends were talking about it and they were talking about, oh my God, it's so wicked, it's hilarious, and so I had to get it. And it is funny, and even though I'm not Pakistani, it really reminded me of a certain type of woman that I grew up around. And the book is not particularly kind to its protagonist who is a very well she's a social butterfly that's what she is you know she's a high society lady and the entire book and i feel like there's a series i think there are like two other books in the series as well that i haven't read um but this book in particular it's sort of skewering a particular strata of pakistani society which is very similar to its indian counterpart so um, I definitely could relate. Again, it's a quick read, it's funny, I think you might like it. E stands for Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri and it's a fairly new fantasy series and I understand from an interview of hers that Tasha Suri actually incorporated bits of the Mughal Empire into her fantasy world um, but she does it in a subtle enough way that it's not, you know, it's not a stand-in for the Mughal Empire. I didn't feel that she was sort of hedging her bets by just wholesale adapting the Mughal Empire's ethos. Instead, she takes these elements and she weaves it into a world of her own creation. And I really liked the magic system that she's talking about. And the feminine energy of this book and there was a lot to really like in it but also it didn't quite come together for me as a friend of mine put it you know there's a part in the middle where they're trekking across the desert and it was so long and endless and incredibly boring that it felt like you as the reader were also in that desert parched and tired endlessly trekking so that wasn't fun However, she is a debut author and she has a, um, a second book in the series coming out or maybe it's out already. And while it's not on top of my TBR list, I think I will read it at some point. F is for Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. And Tessa Bailey has been one of the authors that I discovered this year. And she writes these really sexy, funny romances. And I really enjoyed this one. G stands for The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison and this book, as soon as I read the blurb, I knew I wanted it and I didn't even read any reviews, I just bought it. However, there it sits. I've just had a bunch of other things that I wanted to get through and I haven't gotten around to it, but it sounds amazing. And it's a standalone novel, which is becoming a rarity in the fantasy world. So I can't wait to read this one. H is for The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin, which is a novel that I think half of Booktube has been talking about, and rightly so, because it is amazing. Jemison is by far one of my favorite authors in fantasy writing currently, and the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms is a complex world that is very different from anything else that you might have read before. And that is true of pretty much all her work. I will say though that she is a particular flavor and if you can get into her work, then she is fantastic. But there are people who don't find it easy to enter the worlds that she constructs because they are so layered and multifaceted that you don't always know where everything is. 
and it requires a process of what I can only call surrender to that particular world before it begins to make sense to you. So if you can do that, then it's great, but otherwise she might be a bit difficult. That said, I personally think that The 100,000 Kingdoms is her most accessible work and if you've been meaning to check her out, then I would recommend that you start with this one. I stands for an instance of the finger post which was a sensation when it came out and it's basically a novel that is structured around a bunch of really unreliable narrators. So there's this woman and she's been accused of murder and there are these different men who have different versions of what went down and you have to figure out which one of them is actually telling the truth and which of the others are just making things up because all of them have things to lose and gain from this woman's conviction. I almost put this book in my time and place tag because I have such strong memories of reading this while I was on vacation in Spain and then when I came back to London I was with my friend Caroline and we were going back home from the airport and I insisted on reading passages from this book to her and it takes about like an hour and a half or so to get back to the city from the airport and she put up with me which is why you know that she's a good friend. J is for Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach which is amazingly enough I think the only book starting with J in my library. I have no idea how that happens. I literally couldn't think of another book that I owned that started with J. This is actually a novella if I'm not mistaken and I haven't read it in years but it is one of those books that pretty much every tween of my generation read when we were in school. Is it good? I don't know. I thought it was charming when I was like, you know, 11. And it's about a precocious seagull that is learning the lessons of life. That sounds charming, right? K is for Ketura and Lord Death by Martine Levitt. And I think this was a recommendation by Crystal of Crystal's Bookish Life. Just because it's a Death and the Maiden story and I know that she really likes them and she talks about them quite a bit. So I think that's where I got it. But basically, I love that trope as well. So I bought it. I will read it and I will report back to you about it. L is for The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and this book has been on my TBR for a long time and I was reminded of it the other day when Rosie and I did our Lovey Tidar buddy read and I'm going to link to Rosie's video again because she, when she began reading it, um, she was reading Central Station by Lavi Tidar and she said it gave her the same vibes as this book and I was like, oh, I should pick that up and read it, huh? M is for Murder in Mumbai by K.D. Kalamore and I think this is his debut novel and it's about this young American woman who is found murdered in Mumbai and then her, the murder investigation basically throws up all these different connections to different parts of the city and the kinds of people that live there and it's one of those things where you're not exactly sure who the audience is supposed to be. Like is this being written primarily for an Indian audience or for an American audience? So I bought the book but it's been sitting on my Kindle because I'm a little bit put off by some of the reviews because a lot of them are from Westerners and particularly Americans and they're talking about like, ooh, you know, I've never been to Mumbai but oh my god, it sounds so exotic and I don't know if I really want to invite that energy into my life so I don't know. Um, I think I might do a try a chapter vlog about it at some point but I haven't forgotten about it. N is for The Nun Such by Georgette Heyer, which is a delightful story about this really rich man who goes to this tiny village and basically sets it completely aflame just by existing. It also has one of the funniest misunderstandings in any book ever. 
I generally don't care for misunderstandings that keep the main leads away from each other, but this one was hilarious. O is for Old Filth by Jane Gardam, which is one of those novels that British people always recommend as an integral part of new British literature or whatever. And I bought it and I want to read it. I just can't seem to open it. Like there's nothing wrong with it technically. It's just, you know, like I said, I'm a mood reader and the mood hasn't struck as yet. But if I talk about it often enough and I bring it up often enough around other people, then one day I will be ashamed and I will read it. I have no idea why I'm forcing myself to feel this way about a book that I don't care about, but I can only imagine that I'm being driven mad by the pandemic. P is for The Psychopath Test by John Ronson, who is a journalist, and he basically comes across this checklist that can tell you whether someone is a psychopath or not, and then he basically meets a bunch of people and he is just writing about his experiences and dealing with them and how weird it can get. So it's not a scientific book like he's not talking about psychosis or about psychopaths and why they are that way and you know what can we do about it like this is not that kind of a book it's just a book about the everyday people that we meet in our daily lives who are just psychopaths living in plain sight Q is for The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis and I was introduced to this book through the Netflix adaptation that is coming out pretty soon and it's about this young woman who is a chess prodigy and is also incredibly troubled in her personal life and how her genius for chess as well as her emotional fragility interact and create challenging situations, I guess. It sounds like an interesting book. R is for A Rising Man by Abir Mukherjee and it's the first book in the Sam Wyndham series and I have mixed feelings about this series because on the one hand, I mean, it's a historical detective fiction series set in Calcutta and that's amazing, you know. I would love to see more colonial era detective fiction that's set in settings apart from England and features people from those places. So that's great, but the lead protagonist in the series is an Englishman who is sent to Calcutta to be part of the colonial police in Calcutta and I haven't read all the books in this series but in the couple that I have read I feel like the books don't really grapple with that. I mean there are glancing references to you know what it must be like to be in colonial Calcutta and there's also a Indian detective who is sort of the Watson to Wyndham's Sherlock and he speaks and behaves in a manner that just makes me go, hmm. I feel like that might be historically accurate in many ways, but it is also incredibly off-putting to read as a modern Indian. And again, I don't know if I, as an Indian, am the primary audience for this. So, you know, if this was written for primarily a British audience, then I guess that makes sense. S is for Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, and this is one of my favorites. It's a sort of fairy tale retelling about this young Jewish woman who becomes a target for this otherworldly race because of her ability to turn silver into gold and it's sort of Rumpelstiltskin but Polish or Central European and it's pretty weird and wonderful. Um, it does have a few problems especially with the romance track because Novik seems to be really crap at romance but that's fine you know like she does an incredible job world building and she has this gift of taking a narrative and then 
giving it a twist that is absolutely unexpected and delightful and I really 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 enjoy the world in this one and also we don't really see a lot of Jewish fairy tale retellings do we Tea is for the Tea Planter's Wife by Dina Jeffries. I don't know anything about this book. I picked it up because it looked and sounded like a lot of those mid 20th century novels that I used to read by Victoria Holt and stuff. And this one is set in Sri Lanka and it's about this young woman who travels to Sri Lanka or Ceylon as it was called back then because this takes place in colonial times and then I guess she goes through like a whole emotional journey. I have a deep affectionate spot in my heart for novels set in colonial worlds the way that you know Mary Stewart does it so I have my fingers crossed. I've never read anything by Dina Jeffries, but if she is even half as good as Victoria Holt or Mary Stewart, then she is soon going to become one of my favorite novelists. If any of you have read anything by her, then please let me know if you have a favorite recommendation or a starting point. You is for Unfinished, a memoir by Priyanka Chopra Jonas. That Jonas is really hard to roll off my tongue because I'm just used to thinking of her as Priyanka Chopra. And I'm basically hoping that this memoir is going to be a barn burner. Those of you who only know her from her American experiences, you don't know the kind of career that she's had in India and how she's been a gossip mainstay for close on 20 years now and that woman has been through so much stuff and with so many men in the Bollywood industry and I'm pretty sure there are a ton of stories that she could tell and I'm kind of hoping that at this point in her career where she has sort of pivoted mostly to Hollywood she won't feel the need to filter herself as much as she would if she was still dependent upon the Bollywood industry and also there is one particular romance that I think all of India wants to hear about because she's rather famous for her love life and her last big relationship which was never confirmed or denied was with one of the most famous and famously married Bollywood stars of all time, Shah Rukh Khan. So I want to know how she's going to navigate that because she's dropped shady hints before and Priyanka is really good at being shady. So I want to read this book and it's coming out in January and I really have my fingers crossed. It's probably going to be some ghost-written pablum about like, young girls, you can achieve whatever you want if you believe in yourself, but I have hope. V is for The Vine Witch by Luan G. Smith. And this is again a booktube recommendation, I think. Or maybe it's from one of the blogs that I follow, but it sounds like an interesting YA witchy read. I'm not that excited about the YA aspect of it, but I do like a good witchy read. And it's been a while since I read anything witchy, so um, I'm looking forward to this one. W is for the woman who forgot to invent Facebook and other stories. And this is by Nisha Susan, who full disclosure is a friend of mine and is a fantastic writer. She's a culture writer in India and she writes the most amazing, insightful stories about modern India. And this is basically a collection of short stories. And she is such a good writer, you guys. If you're looking for a short story collection, I highly recommend this one. X is for The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I realized that that's sort of fudging with the X part of it, but I honestly, like this is the only book that I had that had X prominently on in its title, uh, apart from The Devotion of Suspect X, but I felt like everybody probably has read The Devotion of Suspect X and uh, this one might be something that you don't know. So The Poet X is 
I believe a sort of autobiographical novel in that it's about a young woman who discovers slam poetry and how it changes her life and um, Acevedo is one of the most famous slam poets currently working and I think I'm actually going to get the audiobook of this one so I have it on my Kindle and I've been reading it but I think I want to get the audiobook just because um, I want to hear how she says it. That's one of the great joys of slam poetry, you know, just listening to the voice of the person that wrote it. That's part of the experience. So yeah, if you're looking for an audiobook, this is the one that you should get. Why is for Yes Please by Amy Poehler and it's a fun little book. I'm generally a bit disappointed every time I pick up a book that's written by, say, you know, Tina Fey's Bossy Pants or Mindy Kaling had another one. And they generally aren't as good as writers as they are as performers. By which I mean that when you're writing a book, it requires a different voice almost. Like not a voice, but a rhythm. And I feel like people who write for TV really struggle with that. Ali Wong is probably the one person that I've seen just knock it out of the park, both in her stand-up and in her book. But Amy Poehler comes pretty close. If you follow her work, if you've seen her in interviews, then that is exactly the person that you'll see in this book because she is scrappy and opinionated and she takes no prisoners. And I love that energy. And Z stands for Zealot by Reza Aslan. And this is a sort of historical investigation of Jesus and who he might have been and what led him into becoming Jesus Christ, basically. So it really talks about him being a troublemaker and taking on the establishment and fighting for his version of what ought to be done. And it looks at the problems with the Jewish temple at the time and what was going wrong and the relationship with Rome and how a young man like Jesus would have reacted to all these different things. And it sort of interweaves things from the Bible as well as from the historical context to create this sort of biography of a young man who had a vision and was working really hard to achieve it. It's really interesting. It was a minor sensation when it came out for good reasons and bad. I had a good time reading it. So there you have it, folks. That's my list of books from A to Z. Let me know if you have read any of these books, if you would like to read any of them, or if you've read them and you hated them. All opinions welcome. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.